All right, so this is uh, my fifth installment uh, on molecular orbital theory. And basically in this video, I just wanted to uh, do a little bit more practice with uh, some of these sigma and pi molecular orbitals that come from the uh, p atomic orbitals of atoms. So let's just uh, recap for a moment here. Um, in, in my last video, I went over the uh, period two homonuclear diatomic molecules. Um, and the first two, lithium and beryllium, were pretty easy because uh, you just had linear combinations of uh, a 2s orbital with another 2s orbital. And 2s orbitals behave pretty much the same way as 1s orbitals do. So the Li2 molecule was similar to the H2 molecule and the uh, Be2 molecule was similar to the, uh, the, the diatomic helium molecule. So, however, once we got to boron, boron through neon, um, that's when the p orbitals started coming in and we had to ask ourselves well how do these uh, how do these six atomic p orbitals because remember there's three uh, p orbitals total for each atom so how do these six p orbitals combine uh, to form molecular orbitals and the answer to, to this question depends on uh, which atoms you're talking about so remember that uh, everything uh, everything below this line here so the sigma 2s and the sigma star 2s uh, molecular orbitals, those come from the s atomic orbitals. Everything above this uh, green dotted line, the uh, sigma and pi and sigma and uh, sigma star and pi star molecular orbitals, those are all uh, those all come from uh, six atomic p orbitals, three from each atom. So if the uh, if, if the molecule is uh, b2, c2, or n2 then the energy ordering of these uh, six molecular orbitals is going to be pi 2p first and then sigma 2p followed by pi 2p star and then followed by sigma 2p star. If it's uh, O2, F2, or Ne2 then the energy ordering is going to be slightly different. Instead of uh, pi 2p we're going to have sigma 2p first then pi 2p and then pi 2p star and then uh, sigma 2p star. So really the only difference between uh, these two uh, types of molecules is the position of the pi 2p and the sigma 2p uh, molecular orbital. So if we have these three and we just flip-flop these two then we'll get the molecular orbital diagram for uh, these three. You See how that works? So with that in mind, let's go through a couple of examples on uh, some of the uh, diatomic uh, ions that can arise out of these uh, molecular orbital situations. So let's start with the uh, C2 2 plus ion. And I want to make, a, uh, make sure I get the whole thing in the shot here. Oops. Okay. So this is the C2 uh, 2 plus ion. That's what we're going to try to uh, determine the molecular orbitals for. And notice that we can form the C2 2 plus ion uh, as a linear combination of two C plus ions. And notice the energy ordering here. We have pi 2p, sigma 2p, pi star 2p, sigma star 2p, because this is boron, carbon, and nitrogen. We would choose this order of the energy ordering. So I picked the right template here for the molecular orbitals. And so let's start filling out the uh, atomic orbitals first for each uh, C plus ion. So remember, carbon has four valence electrons, so a C plus ion is going to have one fewer than four, so three valence electrons for each C plus ion. And those uh, valence electrons, we're going to fill them in as follows. We got one, two, and then three. And I can do the same thing for the other C plus ions. We have one, two, and then the one remaining electron has to go in the p orbitals. So now we have all our electrons that are going to be uh, in the molecular orbitals. So let's fill them up in uh, increasing energy order. So that means we're going to start with the lowest energy and then fill them up uh, to the highest energy molecular orbitals. So it looks like this one's going to fill up, this one's going to fill up, and then we have two electrons coming from the p orbitals. So that means we're going to place one here and then one here with a paralleled spin uh, so that we follow Hund's rule. So this is the uh, complete molecular orbital diagram for the C2 2 plus ion. And if we wanted to, uh, we could calculate the bond order for the C2 2 plus ion. 
So I'll go ahead and uh, calculate it up here. So the bond order is going to be one half times the number of electrons in bonding MOs. So there's two uh, over here, and then there's two over here. So it looks like uh, four electrons in bonding MOs uh, minus the number of electrons that are in anti-bonding MOs. And let's see, the sigma 2s star one ha has two, and uh, the other anti-bonding orbitals are empty. So the bond order is going to be one half of four minus two, which is equal to one. So based on uh, our bond order calculation, the uh, C2 2 plus ion should be relatively stable. All right, let's move on to another one. How about the N2 2, uh, N2 2 minus ion? So that's just a, a diatomic nitrogen with um, two extra electrons total. So notice the, uh, the energy ordering of the, uh, of the sigma and pi orbitals is the same as it was in the last problem when we did it for the uh, C2, 2 plus ion. Si uh, pi 2p, sigma 2p, pi star 2p, sigma star 2p. That is the correct energy ordering for boron, uh, carbon, and nitrogen. So we have that right. And um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start filling in the uh, atomic orbitals of each n minus ion that are going to linearly combine to make the n2 2 minus ion. So remember that nitrogen has five valence electrons and so that means that each n minus ion is going to have one more than five valence electrons. So that's going to be six valence electrons. So we're going to fill them in uh, in the following manner. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we're going to do the same thing uh, for the other n minus ion. So now we have all the electrons. Next thing we need to do is just fill in the molecular orbitals, which is easy. This one's going to be full. This one's going to be full. And then uh, from the p orbitals, it looks like we have two, four, six, eight electrons coming in. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is the molecular orbital diagram for the N2 2 minus ion. And uh, let's go ahead and calculate the bond order. Uh, why not? So the bond order is going to be 1 half times uh, the number of electrons in bonding MOs. So we have 2 here, 2, 4, 6, 8. So we have 8 electrons in bonding MOs minus the number of electrons in anti-bonding MOs. We have 2 here, and we have 2 up here. So that means we have 4 and 1 half of 8 minus 4. That's going to be uh, 1 half of 4 or 2. So the bond order of the N2 2 minus ion is 2. So the N2 2 minus ion is, uh, is pretty stable as well. It should exist in nature. So let's do one more. How about the O2 2 minus ion? What is the uh, molecular orbital situation for the O2 2 minus ion? So, okay, now uh, in the last two problems we had the uh, the, sig the uh, pi 2p, sigma 2p, pi star 2p, sigma star 2p uh, energy ordering. Now the energy ordering is different because we have oxygen. So the oxygen, uh, the energy ordering for oxygen, fluorine, and neon is, is entirely different from the energy ordering of uh, boron, carbon, and nitrogen. I know I sound redundant in saying that over and over again, but I just I really want to make that clear. So the energy ordering now is going to be sigma 2p, then pi 2p, then pi 2p star, and then uh, sigma sigma 2p star. So once again, the O2 2 minus ion can be formed by a linear combination of two O minus ions. So uh, I like to think of it like um, oxygen uh, usually has six valence electrons, so uh, the O minus ion is going to have one more than six valence electrons, so that's going to be seven valence electrons for each of these guys. So let's go ahead and fill those seven valence electrons in. Looks like we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'll go ahead and do the same thing with the other one. And now it's just a matter of filling in the molecular orbitals again. 
So let's go ahead and do that. This one's going to fill up. This one's going to fill up. Uh, it looks like we have two, four, six, eight, ten electrons coming in from the p orbitals. So um, make sure I have it all in the shot. Okay. Ten, uh, ten electrons total. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So uh, this is the molecular orbital diagram for the O2 2 minus ion. And uh, let's calculate the bond order. So the bond order is going to be one half times the number of electrons in bonding MOs. And it looks like we have two here, four, six, eight, eight electrons in bonding MOs minus, uh, looks like we have two, and we have four, six. So one half of eight minus six, which is one half of two. So that is going to be uh, one. So this is the uh, bond order for the O2 to minus ion. So I hope this video has helped. Uh, like I said, the main point I wanted to drive home is, is this, the fact that uh, I've erased most of it, but uh, <laughs> for boron, carbon, and nitrogen, it's uh, the energy ordering is different for the uh, pi 2p and the sigma 2p molecular orbitals than it is for the uh, O2, F2, and Ne2. So good luck.